Hello gorgeous people, what is going on and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going over the analog horror known as Children Under the House. In this analog horror, we follow a girl named Jess and her family as they move to a new house in Louisiana. Shortly after moving in, Jess starts to hear people from under the floor. She starts screaming and freaking out every night until eventually she goes completely mute. It is now up to her therapist Julia to find out what is really going on in the house and can she ever get Jess to speak again. This analog horror is done in a really cool style where a lot of it is shown to you through children's drawings and the story just progressively gets more and more interesting as it goes on. This is also by the incredible creator Vintage 8 who we have seen in the past. Vintage 8's channel will be in the description down below. Please be sure to go and support your analog horror content creators. Without them, you don't get videos from me like this. So be sure to go over there, drop a like, subscribe, watch some of the other videos that Vintage 8 has to offer. And all right, guys, enough of me talking. Let's hop right in. Last week, I purchased a repossessed storage locker. Inside was an old desk, an outdated computer, and a filing cabinet. The letterhead of a few loose documents read, The Office of Julia Liu. From what I could find, she was a successful child therapist in Kate's Crossing from the late 70s to early 90s. Her obituary stated that she died on December 18th, 2015. Okay, we've heard of Kate's Crossing before in the Vintage 8 universe. At a glance, this seemed like a typical haul. But, typical if not for the collection of VHS tapes hidden in the false bottom of the desk drawer. Ooh. Okay. There's nothing good ever in the false bottom of a desk drawer. <laughs> hey, John. Million dollar idea. A way to share a video without waiting on the mail. What do you think? Anyway, as I said on the phone, I think this may be the easiest way to get you up to speed on what I'm dealing with here. And before you ask, no, we don't have releases for the family. They refused to have their likeness involved in any way. However, they did allow me the use of Jessica's drawings. We will need to change their names when we get to the writing stage. Regardless, I think you'll be able to see why I think this will make one hell of a book. Okay. The questionnaire. So, prior to our first session, each member of the family was given the standard questionnaire. The results are as followed. The patient's name is Jessica Daniels. Jessica, or Jess, as she prefers to be called, is seven years old. Normal birth, no complications, no no medical issues. She's intelligent, sweet, friendly, and highly empathetic. The child was born in Houston, Texas, where she never had issues with school or socializing with peers or adults. The family bought the Clark's house, beautiful house. I love how it's built up on columns. And I'm sure you remember the Clarks from your time here. Sweet old couple. They own that little dive you used to drag me to for lunch. What was it? Oh yeah, the Burger Shack. <clears throat> but anyway, according to her mother, Carol, Jess had a particularly tough time adjusting. She didn't notice anything out of the ordinary until the second week, Wednesday night to be exact. They think it was after midnight when Jess ran into her mother's room screaming. She claimed there were people living under the house. Carol dismissed this as a nightmare, but it started happening night after night until Jess finally refused to sleep in her room. She moved the child's bed to her room, but Jess continued to wake up saying the same thing. She could hear people talking under the floor. Okay. Carol made sure to note that Jess never had problems sleeping in Houston. Adam, the child's father, fed up with having the child sleeping in the room, devised a simple solution. He brought her under the house, tried to show her that there wasn't anything there. And according to Adam, there wasn't, but Jess was convinced she saw something. The girl got into a ball and screamed until her voice gave out. She's been mute since that day. Wow. After a series of tests and multiple second opinions, no physician could find anything wrong. There's nothing hindering the girl from speaking. Therefore, the conclusion is that her condition is mental in nature. The drawings you are seeing are currently her only form of communication. From observations and the questionnaire, I have a few thoughts on the other family members. Carol Daniels. She's the children's primary caregiver. From what I can observe, she's a caring mother. However, she is deeply resentful of her husband, Adam, for forcing them to move from Houston to Kate's Crossing. Adam Daniels is an obvious workaholic. He spends the majority of his time at work. Dean, her brother, typical early teen. He wasn't happy about the move, but seems to be adjusting adequately. 
All right, let's just pause there. Let's do a quick overview. This family moves from Texas to Kate's Crossing in Louisiana, which I believe is the same location as the Tangy virus. But they move to this new home and the girl Jess is having constant nightmares or she keeps hearing people talking from under the floor of the house. And in an effort to be like, listen, Jess, you're overreacting, you're overthinking, or I don't know what your problem is, but look, there's nothing under the house. And clearly she sees something that the father does not because she screams until she's mute and then she can only communicate through drawings. My first instinct here is that it may be like ghosts or something, because if it's a real thing, I don't understand why the parents wouldn't be able to see it. You know what I mean? It has to be something like that. And I feel like ghosts can sometimes choose who sees them and who doesn't. Give me a call after you digest this material. Love the talk strategy. End of questionnaire. Good news, Miss Daniels will allow me to tape recording my voice during the sessions. I will splice in Jessica's pictures and give general descriptions and notes when appropriate. Okay. So we're going to have to see what Jess is saying through her drawings. Session one. Here we go. Hi, Jess. My name is Miss Julia. How are you today? I'm okay. Has your mom or dad told you why you're here? To talk. So how about we get to know each other? Would you like that? Okay. What's your favorite food? Mine, spaghetti. French fries, I'm guessing. What's your favorite color? Blue. I like that one too. Tell me about your family. Uh, mom cooks, I guess. And dad works. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's the brother on the phone. Okay. Brother's a teenager, I'm guessing. Oh, and she's alone. With, that looks like a panda with a missing eye. Why are you frowning? No reply. Okay. So how about you tell me who that is? Yeah. No reply. Did your mom or your dad get him for you? No. So neither? He belongs to my friend. One of the friends under the house? That's very sweet. Tell me more about your friend. I want to make a note here. She stared in the corner of the room as if she was waiting for permission. She then shook her head in the negative. Huh. Is someone here, Jess? Is that your friend in the corner? Is that her drawing of her friend? Another note. That clearly looks like a face. It appears that she has an imaginary friend. What's their name? Maybe we could all play together. Note. She would no longer participate in my questions at this point. Regardless, I thought this was a decent first session. Let's try to talk by the end of next week. Yeah, you could kind of narrow it down that it's definitely something involved with this imaginary friend that she's in fear of. End of session one. Session two. So how are you doing today? Fine. And what did you do last night? Looks like watching TV. Let's play a game. If a genie came out of a bottle and granted you three wishes, what would those be? No reply. Damn, no wishes? Come on. I could think of like five. How about I go first then? Loves the beach. To eat what I want and not gain a pound. <laughs> I'm hoping the last one can be true. Aww. Wanna try? Okay. Happy family. Back to Houston. Uh, 
Um, looks like angels Are coming you out. Angels? Yeah. Is this who you think lives under your house? Kinda. Why kinda? So you wish they'd leave? I wish they could. So you're saying they can't? Let's talk about your friend, okay? Okay, John. Again, the girl stared into the corner of the room, almost like she was waiting for permission. Is that your friend? What's their name? No reply. Would you tell me their name if I gave you a sucker? How about two? One for you, and one for them. Once again, the girl looked into the corner of the room, then shook her head yes. So she got permission. Um, who was that a drawing of? Mia? Note, I have to admit, I found that image quite disturbing. For However, sure. However, it isn't the creepiest imaginary friend that I've had drawn for me. Okay. Does your friend live under the house? Yes. How many friends live under the house? M 10, maybe more. Why do you think they're there? No reply. Are you still scared of them? No reply. Would you like them to go away? <laughs> no, a picture frame fell off the wall. It was located in the corner of the room she claimed her friend was standing. Needless to say, it gave us both a good jump. Ha ha. So, ten imaginary friends. That child has a lot to say, but she's having trouble finding someone to say it to. Most likely the father. For homework, I'm going to try and have dad ask questions. Mirror what we're doing at home. Alright, John. I look forward to our chat Sunday. Bye. For the most part, Julia, who is the therapist, I think is doing a really great job, but it definitely confirms that uh, her imaginary friend is one of the children from under the house, one of 11, I guess, because there's apparently 10 more under there. Definitely sounds like dead children under the house, like the ghosts of them. Maybe they were murdered by whoever previously lived there or something. Not exactly sure yet. They have some kind of physical power because they definitely were the ones to knock that painting or that picture off the wall, which is interesting. And sorry this tape is a little late, but I think I have rats. Something has snuck into my office and eaten all the candy. Interesting. Children would definitely like candy. Just saying. Hey John, tomorrow is Jess's appointment, but I had a few thoughts I'd like to share, so forgive me if I start rambling. You and I have seen quite a few disturbing children's drawings. But I must admit, after re-examining this drawing, I feel there is something oddly true about this image. I feel like this drawing is rooted in something the child has seen, perhaps a movie or something on the news. Maybe Dean tried to scare her, or it could be as simple as a scary story. I've even thought that maybe the imaginary children might represent friends she left behind in Houston. Maybe Maya was her best friend. Oh, Maya, not Mia. That's an interesting thought, but that's definitely not where the story is going to go. <laughs> Session three. Hey, Jess, would you like to play another game? Let's draw a picture of you as an adult. Okay. A uh, doctor? She looks happy. Why do you want to be a doctor? To help people. And I'm sure you will. That's a very good quality to have. So... What does Maya want to be when she grows up? <laughs> Note, as you might suspect, John, Jess once again became fixated with the same corner of the room. She shook her head in the negative over and over and the motions became more and more aggressive. And as I was about to stop the young girl, Jess picked up a crayon. Oh? Maya doesn't get to grow up. Huh. Why is that, Jess? Note. I'll be honest, John. I was scared to ask that question. No reply. Everybody gets to grow up, Jess. 
Not if they are dead. You think Maya is dead? Yeah. What is this drawing? Uh, looks like her in a car in the trunk. What is going on here? Oh, car crash? And her body was cut in two. Why was she in the trunk? She doesn't remember. But she knows bad people put her there. Huh. So maybe she was kidnapped? Now she lives under the house with her friends. What can you tell me about her friends? They're all very sad. Only I can see them. Yeah, why is it only you? So, do you play with the other friends? Some of them. Some of them scare me. And why is that? Because they want to hurt me. And they force me to live and force me to live under the house. Does Maya want to hurt you? No, she protects me. Oh, that's kind of sweet, actually. I was sitting here thinking Maya was a... Oh. Time's up. Before you go, Jess, can you do me a favor? For our next session, can you tell me more about your friends? Draw them? Yes. Oh, boy. By the way, they're sorry about eating the candy. Note, and I'm sure you will ask, I don't know how she knew I was out of candy. There was a moment she was alone when she first arrived. Maybe she peeked in the desk. That's likely it, or the child is talking to the dead. Come on, Julia. Come on. This has to click for you. You really think that she went and opened the drawer of the desk? Usually Come on. conversations with Mrs. Daniels don't extend too much beyond the session and pleasantries. But this time I could tell the woman was in distress. She asked quite a few questions about Maya. I, of course, told her that most children have imaginary friends and that I wouldn't worry. She was also very curious about the Clarks and if they had any children. Of course, as far as I know, the Clarks didn't. When I questioned her curiosity, she mentioned that they have found some old toys, such as Jess's bear, a toy truck, and a few other things. Mrs. Daniels also mentioned that Jess has been taking things and hiding them in her room, as well as under the house. I'll have to ask her about this in the next session. Huh. I'll send Adam's homework after I had a chance to go through the material. I don't expect to be impressed. Um, hold on. I want to go back to the part about the Clarks then. The family bought the Clarks house. Beautiful house. I love how it's built up on columns. And I'm sure you remember the Clarks from your time here. Sweet old couple. They own that little dive you used to drag me to for lunch. Okay, so I just went back to watch that scene again about the Clarks. Apparently they were just an old couple that they bought the house from and they owned like some small diner in town. But based on what we know right now, it does seem like maybe the Clarks were some very bad people that used to kidnap children and then kill them and put them under the house. That's my theory right now. Unless there is like some other kind of twist that's gonna happen here, which could definitely happen. I'm curious to see. Homework. The following drawings and notes are the result of the homework I gave Adam and Jess. Night one, Wednesday. How are you doing, sweetie? So this is the dad talking to Jess, I'm guessing. Fine, I guess.
How was the thing with Dr. Liu? Good. We like her. We... We? Yeah. <laughs> Maya and me. Right, Maya, I forgot. So are you looking forward to school? Not really. Aw. I'm scared kids are going to think I'm weird. Well, you have dead children following you, so. Honey, why would they think that? Because I am. Poor Jess. I can't talk. And I see ghosts. <laughs> Alright, so she's very aware of her own situation. And they're imaginary, not dead. Ah, oh, silly Adam. I'm sure Dr. Liu is telling you the same thing. Actually, Mia is not real. Of course she is. I can see her behind you. Ooh, the writing looks a little more aggressive. You hurt Mia's feelings. You made them mad. Now I am mad. Fine, says Adam. Get ready for dinner. Night two, Thursday. How's your day, baby? Fun. That's good. Okay, and it's her playing with Mia, who's dead. Mia read me a story. I keep saying Mia, I'm sorry, Maya. Oh no, her bottom and top half are both around when <laughs> when she's there. Jesus. Oh. Okay. This is so creepy and weird. What's wrong, dad? He's probably so disturbed. You look scared. Go watch TV. I have more work to do. Yeah, I'd be scared too if my daughter was playing with a dead child. We'll do the question thing later. Oh, they never ended up doing it. Night four, Saturday, no homework. Night five, Sunday, no homework. Night six, Monday. Carol does the assignment for Adam, so the mom's doing it now. Dad had to work late, so we are going to do the homework, okay? Okay. Let's see what the mom's reaction is. Do you think I'll ever hear your voice again? I don't know. That's so sad, man. Sometimes I think about taking you and Dean back to Houston. That's right, the mom did want to do go back. You can't do that. They will never let me leave. I don't think they'll let any of us leave. How would they stop? Who? Like, how would the kids stop them, actually? I know you've seen them. Out of the corner of your eyes. hear things notice things aren't where you left them they are always there who baby don't play dumb mom we know you know 
the children under the house. Oh my god, it's the drawing of the family surrounding all of them. We're their family now. And you can't leave family. Right? There is a lot to unpack here. Yeah. At times, I feel as if she was antagonizing Adam with the drawings. Almost like she was trying to push him away just to see if he'd stay. Unfortunately, Adam did just as she expected. Jess probably won't speak until she can finally let this world go and accept that her parents' problems aren't her fault. Speaking of which, I probably should recommend a good marriage counselor for Adam and Carol. All right, John, I'm looking forward to your thoughts as usual. Homework. Is there more? Earlier today, Carol stopped by the office unannounced. She handed me a folder of additional drawings by Jess. Okay. I could tell that she had been drinking, but it wasn't to the point where I felt it impaired her thinking. The notes included on this tape are from memory. Regardless, I think you'll find them worrisome. Conversation. Hello, Dr. Liu. How are you? Fine, Carol. What can I do for you? Did we have an appointment? No, I'm here alone. I feel so damn stupid. I let myself believe it all could be true. I'm not following Carol. I'm sorry. I'm kinda all over the place. A small part of me is relieved. And the other part is just really worried about my little girl. Maybe start at the beginning. Yeah, you gotta explain what's going on here. Have you looked at the homework? Of course. I let myself believe it. All of it. Just seems so convinced, so sure. I thought, well, hell, maybe there are dead people living under the house. After all, my kid can't be crazy. Julia, Jess isn't crazy, she's just a kid dealing with a lot. I started seeing them too, Dr. Liu. Who did you see? Her friends. So she should believe her then if she's been seeing them. I believe in an afterlife. It's not that big of a stretch. Right? There are lots of reasons that could cause this stress. Exhaustion. My son has seen things too. All right, so everybody's seeing things. Come on. What's with the X's? Are those the eyes of the children? Things he can't explain. He's heard Jess talking to another girl. Jess talking? But always finds her alone. 
Oh god, dude. You know that bear of hers? We've thrown it away a dozen times. Mr. Bartleby. And it comes back every time. You know, I have a colleague I think could help. Oh my God, Julia probably thinks they're losing their minds. Maybe you and your husband could benefit from a session. No, I don't need that. I know all of this is just in her head. What happened? Yeah, how do you know it's just in her head if you've been seeing these things? I had the whole yard dug up. Every inch. Every tree. Outside the house. And underneath. Were those coffins that I saw? Police even brought dogs. And you know what we found? Nothing. There are no kids under the house. Now I'm confused too then. I would definitely think their bodies would have been under. Just a box of toys and a few menus from some old restaurant called the Burger Shack. Uh, hold on a minute. Thanks for listening. Adam thinks we've all lost our minds. It's just good to have someone to talk to. I still need to call the Clarks. See if they want their stuff. We will see you tomorrow. Bye. Okay, so now my thoughts are that maybe the kids' souls are tied to all of the toys, if their bodies aren't there, that is. Maybe there's a chance that their bodies are somehow in the house and not under it, because if they clearly, you know, excavated around the entire house and didn't find the bodies, they, I, they either have to be somewhere or their souls are maybe tied to the toys. That's my thoughts. Um, maybe that's why the Clarks left and moved away. They just left all the toys there knowing that the kids souls were tied to them and they somehow escaped. I'm curious if they're ever going to call the Clarks and what they're going to say. Conversation. I am very concerned for Jess as well as her entire family. It's fortunate that she was able to let go of the delusion but it is concerning how quickly she chose to buy into it. If things continue to deteriorate, we may need child services to step in. Let's speak after you get this. Talk soon, John. Yeah, what are John's thoughts on this? I'm curious. An outside POV. Hi John, it's a few hours before Jess's session, and I just received a phone call that absolutely made my day. Oh? Good news? Adam called and asked if I had a reference for a marriage counselor. This is an incredible step forward. I'd like to think that it was something I did, but the likelihood is Carol's recent actions have had an effect. Yeah. Or at least in his own words, it's time to focus on what's important. This gives me a tremendous amount of hope. Even if they can't save their marriage, they may be able to learn how to cope and keep their problems from spilling onto Jess. 
session four. Note, considering what I have reviewed in the homework and the conversation with Mrs. Daniels, I was surprised to find Jess in such a chipper mood. Oh, she's a lot happier right now. And so is Maya, apparently. Hello, Jess. How are you today? Great. And Maya says hi, too. Well, we know Maya and Jess both like Julia. Oh, hello, Maya. So what's new with you? Note, she opened a manila folder and handed me a note from her dad. Hey, sweetie, I'm sorry about the last few weeks. I'm sorry about a lot of things. I can do better. I will do better for you, for your mom, and your brother. I love all of you more than I love myself, and I'm going to start showing it. I'm ready to start believing you, baby. Huh? Love, Dad. I thought he was the least no. believing one. Clearly, Adam is turning a corner. I believe this will be very important in getting Jess to start speaking again. This is great, Jess. So is this why you're in such a good mood? Yeah. That's very nice, yeah. And... Dad wants to take us on vacation. We might go to the beach. Or the mountains. He said Maya can come too. Isn't that great? Okay, so he's acknowledging the imaginary friend now. Of course it is. Either place sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll keep my fingers crossed for the mountains. Did you have a chance to do the homework? Yep. Alright, let's see it. Maya helped. No, John, I thought I was prepared to see what she wanted to show me. I was wrong. It's the burger rush. It's the burger diner. Brad? Maya. Oh, with the with the toy too. Bad people gave Maya Mr. Bar Bartleby. That's how they stole her. Maya wishes she didn't leave her family. They lured her with a toy. Maya's family. Shelly? Oh God, Shelly's probably one of the other kids. Shelly was scared until they gave her some medicine, but it was too much. Then she woke up under the house. So she overdosed. Wendy, it also says shack there. So they were killing, killing people at the burger shack. That's how they were luring kids. Oh God, Wendy. Wendy remembers being dead before she died. Huh? Being dead was supposed to be freedom. But it was another trap. Another prison. That one I don't quite understand. Who is this? Zack, the boy who burns. Zack doesn't remember his family. Every day was blurry until the last day. Zack was stuffed in a fireplace after his neck broke. Brad. 
Brad is the oldest. He was someplace dark for a long time. They forgot him and he died. He thinks his body is still where they left it. This is horrible. Mark. Mark remembers running, but he didn't get far. The last thing he remembers is a loud bang, then he woke up under the house. So he probably got shot. Kate? Kate is the scariest one under the house. She has a hand for every hand that hurt her. Okay. No, these images are coming from somewhere. I can't believe all of this is the product of her imagination. A young girl shouldn't be able to recall some of these details. Bro, Julia, wake up. Come on. So who are these people? The people under the house. Oh, who are the other people? Not everyone under the house wanted to talk. Oh, okay, because that's not all the kids, gotcha. Most can't remember anything, but they are mad because they want to remember. Well, thank you for doing this. Will it be okay with you and Maya if I keep these? Sure. Those poor thank kids. You. So Jess, why do you think you stopped speaking? I traded my voice for eyes. They needed me to see, so I needed to give something to get something. It was the only way to see my friends. So you don't think you'll ever speak again? Maybe, it depends. Depends on what? If they ever get to leave. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. You can ask me anything. Maya says you talk to an imaginary friend too. It's why she knew we could trust you. Who is John? John, I've never mentioned your name to Jess or her parents. They know I'm interested in writing about Jess's case, but they don't know that I'm collaborating with another therapist. I need to think about this a little more. I'll get back to you. Because they're ghosts and they could be anywhere at any time that they want, Julia. They know. <laughs> They know everything. That's how they knock the pictures off the walls. That's how they know so much. Come on, Julia, wake up. John, I know you disagree, but I'm leaving for the library. I have to know if any of this is true. Oh, there you go. Yeah, just look up missing kid cases for these names in the area. There's a logical explanation not rooted in the supernatural. But unfortunately, I just don't see it. Okay, Julia's starting to believe. I have never mentioned your name. Your name isn't written anywhere in my office. It's not even on the tapes. And no, I don't edit these videos in the same location I see patients. I've gone over every suggestion you gave me and none of them line up, not one. Look at it this way. If I find nothing, this will be your chance to rub it in. Tell me you told me so. God knows it wouldn't be the first time. But if I do find something, then I'm not sure if I'm the right person to help this girl. Research. Come on, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get some reveals here. It took most of the day, but after going back nearly 10 years, I found what I was looking for. Brad Landry. Please continue to search for Brad Landry 8.
Have you seen this child? Zach Hardy, nine. Livingston Parish, native missing. The police are looking for any information on Zach Hardy. Parents say he disappeared Friday afternoon while playing in the front yard alone. His mother, Candace Hardy, said, I went to get him a glass of water, and by the time I came back, he was gone. Zach's disappearance is just one of many that have plagued the area. Never found. Police closed the case. Wendy Peterson, eight, missing. Police have no leads. Wendy Peterson was last seen getting a large white van in Kate's Crossing. The witness, her brother Tom Peterson, said she was playing with other kids. I figured she'd be safe. There were so many grown-ups just hanging around. I went to get some of the snacks from the concession stand, and by the time I came back, she was getting in someone's van. Tom was not able to see the driver. Another child missing. Police have no leads. Kate Jones, 10, taken, police baffled. Child abductions or serial killer? 10 years of missing children, 15 gone without a trace. Kate Jones, 9. Mark Williams, 8, vanished. Shelly Cameron, 7, missing. Fourth in the last four months. One year later, Shelly Cameron still missing. You know now, Julia, you know. Dozens of children missing. Emergency rises in search for youngster nine, Maya. Wait, hold on, I want to read this one. The FBI, the Tangipahoa Parish Sheriff's Department, and a uh, series of neighbors and friends are searching for nine-year-old Maya Martinez. She disappeared Saturday at the Cates Crossing Parish Mall. We looked away and she was just gone. Miss Martinez said, we all, we have all hands on deck here, said Chris Benton, the FBI agent in charge of the investigation. All right, so actually now by reading some of these stories, I don't think that they were all um, kidnapped or taken at the Burger Shack. I definitely think some of them were, or that's how they scoped out their victims was at the Burger Shack. Like if they saw a kid that they were interested in, they marked him down and eventually followed them to then kidnap them. I think it'd be a little too obvious if 15 kids were all going missing at the Burger Shack, then clearly something's going on. But yeah, we heard that one of them got in a van, one of them was just taken from the front yard. So they must have been like, this must have been a full operation for these people where they were just like tracking down these kids and then taking them away when they could. This is terrible. I'm so happy that Julia knows it's real now though. Sad end to the Maya Martinez investigation. Body of missing girl found in the trunk of known criminals. An accident leaving two dead appears to have also ended the life of Maya Martinez. The young girl had been missing since Saturday. Her kidnappers, Ralph Kemp and Gerard James, both frequent residents of the parish penitentiary, crashed into a light pole late Sunday night. Heavy alcohol use was likely the culprit. The young girl's body was found in the trunk of their vehicle. It is believed that the child was a victim of tra child trafficking scheme. Autopsy results showed that the girl had high doses of heroin in her system. That's horrible but here's the thing ralph kemp and gerard james are not the same people that owned the house that jess lives in now did these two people maybe help capture the children for the other family that owned the house i don't know i guess let's let's continue watching maya's family it all makes sense now, Julia, right? It all makes sense now. They're all real, John. They were someone's children, someone's babies. But why are they under that house? Why are they drawn to Jess? Did the Clark see them too? I understand if you want out of this, John. I know you're not that comfortable. Hold on. Hello? Speaking? What? When? I understand. Thank you. What happened? John, Adam was just murdered. What? Come on, get this next tape started. I gotta know. I gotta know what happened. Why was the dad murdered? Adam's funeral went like you might imagine. I didn't expect a big turnout, though. Apparently, Adam was more popular than I thought. Even the Clarks came to pay their respects. Mm. But I suppose Kate's Crossing has always been a friendly place. Oh, 
Why did so many people come? I feel like that was referenced for a reason. Poor Adam probably wouldn't agree. Police said it was a carjacking gone wrong. A closed casket funeral. I don't want to know what they mean by gone wrong. Yeah. Something's... Something happened there, come on. I really feel for Carol and the kids. With everything they've already been through, I imagine the situation seems impossible. I just want to help, but I really don't know how. Carol told me in passing that they were moving back to Houston. She said Jess wanted to do one more session before they left. I should be hopeful, but I keep thinking about what she wrote in the homework. They will never let me leave. Yeah, I was just going to say that. What's going to happen then? Do I show Carol the articles and beg her to stay? Or let them go and hope for the best? Um, and if they do go, how do I help those poor children trapped under the house? It's just too much, John. Too much. I have a week before her session. I'm going to think it over. Yeah, I really don't know what she should do. It's definitely... Yeah, I really don't know. How would they stop any of it? I've gone back and forth on this, but after the session, I'm going to share the articles with Carol. If it were me, I'd want to know. That's fair. Hi, Jess. How are you today? I'm sad. Yeah, I'd be sad too if my dad got murdered. I know, but that's okay. It's natural to be sad when we lose someone we care about. I didn't lose him, he was taken. What do you mean by that? Oh my god, Jess. I'm so sorry. You shouldn't be seeing something like this. Wait, were the kids involved in the killing? It's okay, I'm kinda used to it. Is that Shelly in the background? Yes. So did she see everything that happened? She liked following dad. She said the man in the mask seemed familiar. Tell me it's... Is it one of the Clarks? Does she know who that is? No, but they seemed familiar and they struggle with memory, so. But she heard his voice before. Really? Where? She doesn't remember. Come on, come on. Can you ask her again? Shelly disappeared a decade ago. That can't be a coincidence. Yeah. She's sorry. But she doesn't remember, just pieces of things. Jess, I want you to tell your friends that I want to help them, but I need any information they can give me. Can Shelly or Amaya ask the others? Anything might help. Yeah, maybe if they could catch yeah. who did these she things. She acknowledging people in every direction. I got the uneasy feeling that this room was filled with children. That's so crazy. Oh, it's the faces of all of them in the room. Note, for once the young girl looked in charge. She placed her finger on her lips to silence whoever was speaking. Finally, she pointed across the room, then started writing. Okay, okay, Jess. Food, they remember hearing people talking. Burger Shack. It was loud, but the medicine kept it quiet. It was dark. All of them remember the dark. Some remember some some remember more faces than others. Money. There was always money. The woman was nice. She always brought food. Mark said maybe it was a man. 
he was nice too. Come on. Come on, we're getting close. He brought toys. Thank you, Jess. Everybody. I'll do my best to try and figure this out. Let's go, Julia. You never told me who John was. John is a friend. We went to school together. We worked together for a few years. He lives in Florida now with his wife and kid. And what Maya has noticed is that I send him tapes of our conversations. I was hoping he could help me with your case, and we were thinking about writing a book about you and your friends. So he's not a ghost? Oh, are they gonna get mad? No, not yet anyway. Does this bother you? Or your friends? Nope. Okay. I don't believe that really. Maya was hoping to meet a new ghost. Aw. Someone that could help them move on or something. Well, that's what Julia's gonna do. Julia's gonna help you. You know this is goodbye, right? Yes, your mom told me that you were going back to Houston. I'm not going back to Houston. Why not? Because I'm going to live under the house. No. The ones that don't remember will never let me leave. I'm going to try and talk to your mom, okay? Thanks, but she's not going to listen. She might after she gets this information. Come visit me if you can. End of session five. Oh boy. Like before, the following notes are from memory. I want to thank you for everything you've done for Jess. This is Carol talking now, the mom. It was my pleasure. Look, I want to talk to you about Jess, Jess's friends. I was having a bad day. Hell, a bad month. I let my imagination get away from me. Miss Daniels, they're real and I have proof. That can't be true. We dug up the entire yard. We didn't find anything. That's because you weren't looking in the right place. Every name she gave me, I was able to find in the paper. She even knew how Maya perished. Then Jess isn't. Jess's problem is supernatural. Then it's a good thing we're leaving. No, no, that's not how it works, Carol. That's what I wanted to talk about. I was hoping you'd consider staying. Why? I'd like to try and help them, and for that I need Jess. Also, she doesn't think they're going to let her leave. What does that mean? It sounds like a threat. Not by Julia, don't get mad Julia. According to Jess, it is. Then that's a good enough reason to leave, isn't it? So here's the other thing. I kind of feel like they should leave because clearly whoever killed the dad is somehow connected to all this. And maybe, I, I don't know why they killed the dad out of all people. Maybe the dad found something. Maybe the dad was somehow getting close to what was really going on here. But they clearly are killing people that are getting involved in this situation. So doesn't that put Jess, her brother and Carol all at risk? Like, I feel like maybe it's best that they do move away and just kind of forget about the situation or just try to. But I, again, I don't know what, I don't know what they would do to actually try to keep her to stay. Would you want to live with someone threatening your little girl? I understand, but this might cause more problems than solve. And then there's the other children. Look, I'm sorry about those children. I really am, but I have to worry about my kids first. Thanks for everything. Oh boy, how are they gonna solve this problem? Jess's last session was two weeks ago. 
The next day, Carol left with Dean and Jess. They didn't get more than two miles away from the house when Jess had a violent seizure. Jess hasn't been the same since. She no longer communicates. She just sits in the corner, blankly staring at the wall. Talk later, John. In Houston or in Kate's Crossing? I'm guessing they went back to the house in Kate's Crossing. Review. I'm afraid we we're going to lose Jess. Yesterday, she had her fourth seizure. Oh, my God. The poor child seems weaker by the day. Every time the phone rings, I'm afraid it's Carol calling me with the worst. We got like 23 minutes left. They better figure this out. The good news is that Jess still communicates. Each morning I find several of her drawings waiting for me in the office. At Aww. least I hope that it's her leaving me drawings. Oh my gosh, she's going to be one of the dead children under the house. It's scary where I am. It's like another world here. It's dark and cold. It's almost like she's talking that she's under the house already. and Maya dad isn't here come on Shelly said he moved on dad reached out I tried to take her, tried to take her along but something kept her here same thing keeping us all here They are so confused. I think it's the fact that their bodies haven't been found and that their deaths are kind of like not fully explained. They try to remember but can't. They're stuck in a loop that makes no sense. They only recognize pieces of things. Is this going to happen to me? Tell mom she can leave. I'll be okay. No. Tell mom and Dean I love them. Jess is not dead yet. There has to be a way to save this girl. A way to get her soul back in her body. But time is running out. I called the Clarks in desperation. I was surprised they moved back to Kate's Crossing. Apparently, RV life didn't suit them. Mm. Mrs. Clark probably thought I was crazy. I can't imagine too many people who expect to get a call asking if they've seen ghost children in their home. Come on. Make the connection, I gave Julia. I her Maya's name. Brad, Shelly, Wendy, Mark, all of them. She was clueless. She couldn't recall anything weird ever happening in that house. I must have sounded hopeless. She asked me several times to come by their place. Said we could talk over lemonade. I of course declined. I just don't have the time. She, she, they were. Jess doesn't have the time. They're gonna. They're trying to lure her in to kill this her. This is outside my realm of expertise. I probably should call a priest. 
but I've always been more comfortable behind a stack of books than kneeling on a pew. The following are the notes I accumulated over three days of continuous research. I never would have imagined that there were so many books dedicated to spirits, ghosts, demons, and the afterlife. Notes. What creates a ghost? One murder, especially those that remained unsolved. Sometimes the ghost will not move on until the murder is solved. The best hope of ending this, but who could have done it? Come on, Julia, make the connection, make the connection. They move away, but then they move back when sketchy things start happening. The Clark's gotta be at fault. Two, lack of a proper burial possible. Most of the children have never been found. Three, time loops. Ghosts might be stuck in their last moments. Why don't they remember their last moments? Older ghosts may remember less and less of their former lives. But what if they already don't remember? What's left? Is anything left? Emotions? Anger. Possession was just possessed? Don't demons possess people? Can ghosts possess people? Is that the case here? Yeah, something's in her body. Because her soul's not there. Is that the case here? No, no, no. The children are victims too. What the hell am I missing? I've been racking my head for days. What am I not seeing? Too many questions. Who could have done this? What is their motive? Connection between the kids? Come on, it's in the drawings, Julia. What does Ralph Kemp and Gerard James fit in? Were they the killers? Were there others? Heroin? Why are the kids under the Clark's house? Is it the location or Jess? Why was Adam killed? What was the motive? Maybe there's a piece of something in one of the drawings that I missed. Or maybe in one of those newspapers. Heroin in her system. Drugs and drug use effects of heroin can cause a dreamlike state. Is that why the children don't remember their last moments? They are reliving that confusion, but why would you do this? They weren't murdered. The children were being trafficked. And they just died in the process, maybe, of being trafficked? It's, it's like, like Jess said, the ghosts only see pieces. No way they all make a drawing together. You can see the Clarks in the window. The Burger Shack. Yep, you can see both of the Clarks in the windows. They had to be. Those poor kids. And who do these drawings look like? Yep. Oh my god. It was the Clarks. And I've told them everything. I need to go to the police. But who's gonna believe this? The Clarks are one of the most prominent families in Kate's Crossing. You gotta prove it. And I can't believe that a child's drawings will hold up in a court of law. I need to get Carol and those kids out of that house. 
and I shuddered to think what would have happened if I took Mrs. Clark's offer for lemonade. Yep. I'd probably be under that house, too. Yep. Hello? Really? That's incredible news. Yes, I'll be right over. And Mrs. Daniels, I have a lot to tell you. I don't think we can trust the Clarks, but we'll talk more when I get there. John, Jess woke up, but I'm sure you'll hear about this before you get the tape. I'm dropping this in the mail as I leave for the Daniels. If I or any of us disappear, it was the Clarks. Okay, that's good she's got a backup at least. Let's go, John. So many thoughts were racing through my mind as I drove to the Daniels home. The Clarks, Adam, the children, Jess. Why was she able to wake up now? What changed? Did I do something? Hell, maybe the ghost let Jess go. No, you, maybe you found escaped. out who actually killed why them. Why does this feel too easy? Unless and you're why is being it when lied you have to. Somewhere to be, you hit every red light. It was like something was telling me to stay away. The Clarks got there first. The moment I walked through the front door, I found Mr. Clark pointing a gun in my face. Jess wasn't awake. I was worried. <sighs> Damn. And I didn't need to guess why. I knew in my heart that this was my fault. We were all going to die. House call. John, I know you've heard me tell this story a dozen times now, but the following drawings are Jess's account of the event. Although she was unconscious for the majority of the experience, Jess was incredibly accurate. The Clark's plan was simple. They were going to shoot us, then burn the place down. You were supposed to leave after your husband died. Why didn't you just leave? So they did kill her husband. We tried, but just got sick. We figured kill your husband and we wouldn't have to kill the kids. Now our hands are tied. Jess, I hope you can hear me because we need your help. What is Jess going to do? We can't leave. Please don't hurt my babies. It doesn't matter. This is on you. Miss Julia, what about the other children? Were your hands tied when you kidnapped them? Hurt them? Yeah, I'm curious what the response is. We never hurt a single kid. It was just a business. So, but they were responsible. They got the kids to whoever did hurt them. Tell that to the families you ruined. You might not have pulled the trigger or taken a life, but you sent them on their way. And that makes you worse. You knew what of monsters you were feeding them to. As nasty as it is, the money saved us. I'm alive because of it. I'm not apologizing for surviving. Even the devil thinks he's justified. That's cute. But I think we've heard enough from you. Shoot him and let's burn this place. Mom, I don't want to die. Close your eyes, baby.
Miss Julia, tell me. Do you even remember their names? John, I knew I only had one shot to survive this. I needed the children to remember. The children were in this house with the Clarks for years, and they never made contact. I needed the Clarks to confess, admit to the crime, and if my time being a therapist has taught me anything, people want to validate their actions. You just need to know how to ask. I remember all of their names and faces. You don't forget that. Mia, Mark, Wendy, Shelley, Zach, Brad, Kate, Sue, Wes, June, Linda, Christian, and Gladys. Gladys, those little faces behind the cages. We aren't monsters. Nobody wants to see a kid cry. You are monsters, though. That's why you drug them? Enough. But what I can't figure is how do you know those names? We had this place scrubbed. You shouldn't have gotten that from a box of toys. Toys I thought were destroyed. The toys were kept coming back. We remember that. Simple. They told me. Hey, Maya. They remember you. Do you remember them? Yes. Oh, it's written in hands. We remember you now. We remember everything. You took us. Now we take you. No, we're sorry. No mercy. The children ripped the Clarks apart, then dragged every piece back into the shadows. They left nothing, not even blood. Wow. Wow. Yeah, because they have the power to give just seizures. I'm sure they have the power to rip people apart. After that, Jess woke up. Can she the speak only again? Thing left of the Clarks was their gun and a news story. Owners of the beloved Burger Shack missing. Police have no leads. Clark's vehicle found, but police still have no suspects. Police fear the worst in Clark's disappearance. Nobody would believe what happened anyway. No one will ever know what they did except us, and they will probably always be remembered as the kindly couple who owned the Burger Shack. But according to Jess, they got what they deserved. Yep. Oh, they went to hell. With probably everyone else involved that died. End of house call. Alright, there's about four minutes left. I feel like this is probably going to be like an epilogue kind of thing. Final session. Oh my god, are we going to hear Jess's voice? two weeks since Jess woke up. Carol said things felt different in the home. Brighter. She said it felt like a different house. Well, it's so sunny now. Carol told me they were finally moving back to Houston. Jess had been in a great mood since, but she still has not said a word. Aw. Maybe the children took her voice with them. That'd be so Hello, weird. How are you today? Great. Are you looking forward to moving back to Houston? Yes, I miss my friends. I wish dad was coming, but I know he's somewhere watching over us. I'm sure he is, Jess. 
Your mom said you still aren't speaking. Have you given it a try? No. Jess just shrugged and smiled. Looks like I got my wish. I got a happy Jess after all. Have you seen Maya or the others? I got my wish too. Aww. That they were going back to Houston and the kids were set free. They are free now. No. John. Her little voice was the sweetest sound I've ever heard. We spent the rest of the session playing old board games. We had a good time, and then after, we said goodbye. <laughs> Julia's crying, it looks like. Like I said, John, this would make one hell of a book, but I don't think it's a book I can write. At least not now. Maybe one day I'll come back to this case. Maybe. Besides, no one will ever believe it. I think it would be better to just let these children rest. Yeah. Sorry to waste your time, John. We can talk it over when I come down for Thanksgiving. Final session. It's been 10 it's years, been ten years oh. since I've looked at these tapes. I thought about destroying them, but that doesn't feel right. I followed up on Carol, Dean, and Jess. Carol has a job in some accounting firm. She never remarried. Dean went to college. He's studying finance. Jess seems to be happy. She's about to graduate and move to New York for college. Carol says she doesn't remember Maya or the ghost children. Neither her or Dean ever bring it up. And maybe neither should I. The children under the house. Amazing. Amazing as always another great piece of work by vintage eight truly truly amazing That was really an analog horror movie an hour and 20 minutes of analog horror that kept me invested in the story I had to see it through all the way to the end there and I'm very happy that we got a good ending That makes me very very happy. The kids were set free the evil people died um, I think the only sad thing about the ending is that the dad died at some point and sadly can't go on with them the dad was kind of just you know he didn't even do anything wrong he was kind of just a victim to this whole situation which sucks you know at least the people that did all the bad things got what they deserved and everyone else ended happily ever after in this one do i think it was a little predictable that the clarks were the killers yes i mean i said that from the jump like whoever was previously in the house must have been the killers but I think it was still good regardless. I think the story was still good all throughout. It was great seeing how things developed in the way that they did. I, I just think it was amazing. I think Vintage 8, that is, we're three for three now on incredible Vintage 8 analog horrors. So again, if you guys haven't already, please go check out Vintage 8's channel. The link will be at the top of the description down below. Make sure to go over there, hit the subscribe button, make sure to watch some of the other analog horror videos that are over there, and just show as much support as possible. You gotta support your analog horror creators or else you're never gonna get work like this from me. But alright guys, I do really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to drop a like on it. Also, comment down your thoughts, let me know what you thought of Children Under the House. And also, don't forget to subscribe. If you're new here, we do videos like this all the time, and I'm trying to hit 300k before the end of the year, so sub would be greatly appreciated. Also, big shout out to all my members. You guys are absolutely incredible. For those of you that don't know, members get early access to videos, members only live streams, and exclusive videos. You can become a member in the description down below. There is a link that says how to become a member. And all right, guys, thank you so much for all of your support and for watching this video. And I will see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.